Who loves D and Angel? <laughs> nice pillow. I'm getting rid of the big stuff. Is anyone in here dressed as Tamaki Suo? Oh, there he is! Dude, I got a present for you. Come on out here. I only have one request of you. Call me King. <laughs> Okay. 
Bad Dad likes Star Trek. Who, when I said who likes Star Trek, you thought, I'm more of a Star Wars guy. Take me home, you will. <laughs> nice. Don't worry, there's four more of those, too. Another one, his twin brother. You guys, this, this is crazy. By the way, I'm doing this all three of my panel days. So, wow. I mean, there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, doggone it. No, okay, what is that? Oh, okay. Well, no. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, this is good. Okay. Who remembers? Okay, this is a weird trivia question, and I don't think anyone's going to get it, but why not try it, right? Um, back in the 2007 first annual American Anime Awards, <laughs> half the room's like, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> I don't Google it. When dinosaurs ruled the earth. What is that? 2007. I won Best Actor for Full Metal Alchemist that year. But I was nominated for Best Actor for two roles. One was Full Metal, what was the other one? What? No, it was not Pokemon. Nope. This was way before Oran or Pokemon. No, you already got a present. In the back. Do you know? Okay, I played Zero. 
hero in Vampire Night? What other character did I do? Yes. His twin brother, Ichiru. Yay. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Who wishes they could take Sergeant Frog in the bathtub with them? Who here 
really, really, really loves, like on almost a regular basis, it's part of your routine, loves tea. I'm done coming. That's not true, is it? You all love tea so much? Okay, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay, if you're... I'm trying to... Oh my gosh. How do I narrow it down? Um... Who brews their own tea? Dad coming! This isn't working! <laughs> Who has a teapot with them? You are liars! <laughs> to the teapot! Are you serious? Come up here, baby. Come here. Come up here. Because I want everybody to see this. This is so beautiful.
This is a kill. This is a full metal alchemist calendar. Now you see, my, my macho maleness wants me to throw this as far as I can. But that's probably not a good idea. Guys, I mean so much. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Who needs a good wallet? Wait a minute, full metal alchemist. Wait a minute, it's like got Edward etched into it. Isn't that nice? Let's see. Okay, this triple has something inside to make it go. So don't get hurt. But I'm sending it deep. Going on. Ready? <sighs> and now the largest character I've ever played. Don't forget what? <laughs> you guys, I, okay. Unfortunately, I can't throw. Does it get cold here? Wait, a lot of you guys came from far away, didn't you? Who came from someplace that gets really cold? Did you really? North Dakota? Oh, good, you're gonna need this, that's what I'm saying. Beautiful, <laughs> that. It's winter. 
every fixing ends arm has an end to jerk. As a jerk. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Is that cool? I know, I don't, even, I don't even think they have a lot of this stuff anymore. What is that? Is it a card game? Yeah, it's a deck of cards. Okay, go away before I give you everything. Get out of here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Something else to throw. It was Darth Vader, as you know. Okay, Vampire Knight? Our band for you. Still in the plastic, yo. That's pretty nice. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna leave the rest of it for tomorrow. Oh, what a cute key ring. Hey, you're not allowed to get any more presents, kiddo. That's the kid that got the tea set. Can you believe she's like, I won't be here tomorrow. You better be drinking out of that tea cup. That's what you better be doing tomorrow. You better be watching Full Metal Alchemist episode one. Stop. 
unless it's a cigar. And I always have a bit of, aren't those beautiful? I, I've never seen them before, and I got them, they were all in this box. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, um, I'm gonna hide this over here. Okay, we've got just a little bit of time. We'll take a lot more time tomorrow to talk about things, but who's got a question they want to ask? Oh, now, anybody dressed as death side gets to ask a question. May you sing this? Yes.
didn't even occur to me. I just, oh my gosh, it's a chance to act. I have a chance to play a character and I love doing that. Granted, it's with my voice, but it's still acting. And so I, I never expected to be, money was never even part of the equation. It was just, I would have done it for nothing. Don't tell any of the studios that. Because <laughs> they're probably like, oh my gosh, look how much money we wasted on this bozo. I have outstanding checks right now. Every time I get a check from some studio for uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or whatever, I'm like, oh, that's right, I get paid for this. Like, I don't even remember because it was not about money, and that's the point. It has to be about passion for it. You study acting, get as much experience as you can. Then you need to be where the work is. There are only certain places where certain kinds of work are done, right? Um, I've said this many, many times, but if I wanted to be a country western singer, where would I go? Nashville, Tennessee, most likely. Country music capital of the world. Maybe Austin, maybe somewhere in Texas, maybe Oklahoma, I don't know. But the point is, not just anywhere. Only a handful of places can you do certain things. And voice acting is no different. Los Angeles, New York, Dallas, Houston, lucky you. Vancouver, a little bit Toronto, but you have to be where the work is, right? You can be the greatest voice actor ever, and if you live in Kentucky, you're probably not gonna get many opportunities to use your gift, right? The third thing I added recently, because I decided that it was more important than the first two, and here it is, and this is for life, tenacity. You know what that word means? You just don't give up. If you, the, the world is full of people that are not very good at what they do, they're not necessarily the best at what they do, but they just didn't give up. They just kept pushing and kept pushing. They didn't get discouraged. They didn't get bummed out. Oh, I, I, I didn't get picked for another audition, you know what I mean? And they get bummed out and they quit. The people that make it and get in, get opportunities are the people that just don't give up easily. So if, if you're easily disappointed, probably almost any creative career is not for you. Because there are 10,000 people right behind you who want it really bad. And if you don't stick with it, you're out. And the next other 10,000 people are gunning for that same opportunity. So those three things, okay? I wanna say something real quick. How much time do I have? Six minutes. I wanna say, I'm gonna talk about this again tomorrow because there will be people here tomorrow who are not here today. So I wanna to apologize in advance if you come to the panel tomorrow and I take a few minutes to say this, but I can't not say it, okay? I'll try my best to say it a different way tomorrow. <laughs> A little more fresh. Interesting. We're going to go a little deep. Is that okay? Yes. Mm, Lord help me. I have until 7.30. Right? So I have 36 minutes. Okay. I'm just going to take a few minutes here because I want to say something to you guys. From my from the bottom of my heart with every ounce of, of emotion I have. What? Okay, well, um, let me tell you how I feel. First of all, how do I feel? I feel blessed beyond words.
you better not be pointing fingers at people because that they're always four point back at you. Amen. You ever hear that one before? Amen. I'm telling you that. <laughs> we all do the best we can. And I'm no different than that. I have spent my entire anime career wanting to encourage you guys, wanting to be a positive impact on you. And in my interactions with you, maybe say something that helped you or share something that got you through a difficult time. It has been the greatest joy of my life. And I know that there are tens of thousands of, of those people out there that I have spoken to and written back emails and interacted with. And that's my greatest privilege of my career. But I want to say something. This is what I meant to say. Everybody who's ever been born on this planet Everybody who's ever been born on this planet wants to feel valued. Everybody wants to feel like they matter. Everybody wants to feel like people are listening to them. Everybody wants to feel like they're worth something or that they, that they can make a difference or that they can be noticed. Here's the problem. What lengths are you willing to go to to get that? And therein lies the problem our world is in right now. I feel for people who want to be noticed. I feel for people who feel alone. You're in this room. You know I'm talking to you. You sit in your little room at home and you're like, man, nobody knows if I even exist. Nobody cares what I think about things. I have nothing to say of any importance. You know, I might as well be invisible. Tell me that there are not at least 200 people in this room that have felt that way. You want to get on a little secret? I'm one of you. I'm one of you. My parents divorced when I was, when I was nine. And my dad was never around. And I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't my dad give a crap about me? Why doesn't he ever come to anything I do? I work really hard, I'm not a bad kid, I don't get in trouble, I'm, you know? What's wrong? Anybody identify? Now, maybe not that one thing, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Something happens in your life that makes you think, well, am I just worthless? You know? And I get the emails all the time from people who say they just feel like nobody cares, you know, whether they're around or not. And the unfortunate thing is that everybody wants to be noticed like that. At this moment, this young lady has my attention. And she's going to go home and she's going to remember when I stopped right now and looked at her and talked to her. And it's going to make her smile. You all have that power, you know that, to make other people smile. The problem is, everybody wants some kind of validation or attention, but the problem is that a lot of people go to extreme means to get it. Yeah. So here's my encouragement to you, everyone, okay? Be noticed for doing something good. Wouldn't that be great? Be validated for doing something positive. Not for causing a, a storm. Not for hurting people. Not for ruining people. Be known for doing something good and something encouraging and something that lifts people up and something that makes people better. I 
I mean, I want that for all of you. If I'm gone tomorrow, that word is still a good word for you. <laughs> no matter whatever happens to me, no matter whatever happens to me, I have spent 20 years interacting with you. I have received thousands of emails. And you know what else? They're not even about anime. They're emails about cutting themselves or feeling worthless and not wanting to keep going or parents having just divorced or a brother or sister who has a disease and is dying or loss or tragedy. I've spent 20 years answering those emails and doing whatever I can to encourage. You have the same power. You don't have to be a voice actor. You have people in your circle that you go to school with or you live in their neighborhood or relatives and friends you have people that you have the power to be a positive impact on them. So why don't you do that? Because you know what? The negative, hurtful garbage is the cheap, easy way out.
voice acting. You didn't expect it to blow up like this and everybody to want to be voice acting, but you know that you are one of the main, big influencers that you, you have done just so much. It's like, because, it's, I don't know, there's so many words to describe how wonderful, I'm sorry, I, I don't know I'm making you cry, but like, you just, like, you're such a wonderful and such a faithful like person, and you're such a positive. And I'm sorry. You know, whenever people. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what your particular. I don't know what your particular faith is. Or religious beliefs are, you probably know what mine are. <laughs> in fact, I think I get in trouble sometimes because I'm a little too, well, no, I'm not too vocal, but because I'm open about it. But you know what? All I have to say is, as hard as this is to say, God's got me. Yes. I, I have to believe that whatever, whatever, whatever happens, happens, right? And you have to trust. Because you know what? At the end of the day, all of you you, in your jobs, in your families, in your relationships, you only have so much control. That's right. The sooner you learn that you really don't have much control, the better off you will be. Because if you really think you can control everything, you're going to be horribly disappointed and very unhappy. Because you just can't. You can't control other people. Nope. You can't control circumstances. And so, you know, I just have to trust that, you know, let it go. Not the frozen, let it go. Um, but thank you for the kind words. You know, I have to tell you something funny. Um, when I was a little boy, and I loved Star Trek so much, William Shatner was everything to me. Like, he was my role model, right? Um, he was like the father figure. My dad was gone, right? There was Captain Kirk. I wanted to be like him. He had such an enormous impact on me, and I had the opportunity a few years ago to tell him so. He and I were at a convention in Dubai. Whoa. We were both signing autographs in Dubai, and we were at dinner one night on the Persian Gulf. And we're sitting at this round table, and it's me, and Bill, and his wife Elizabeth, and Gary, our manager, and our, like our guide who was helping us. And his wife, Bill's wife, started asking me questions about my Star Trek web series, which I have not talked about at all today, so you should be really proud. Because usually I talk about it all the time. Star Trek continues, check it out. Um, but I was, his wife asked me about it, and I have been to many events with Bill Shatner. We go to dinner, we sign together, and I have never even spoken the words of Star Trek. Because I didn't want him to immediately, you know, brand me as some kind of a, you know, oh, another one of those, right? Uh, get you. Uh, I don't know what to say. So, um, I never talked to Star Trek with Bill. But we're sitting at this dinner, I love your shark. But we're sitting at this dinner, that's really cute. And Bill's wife, Elizabeth, says, what's this Star Trek? <laughs> and I started telling her, not Bill. I'm talking literally across the table to Elizabeth. And I'm showing her, I pull out my phone, and I'm showing her pictures. And I'm like, you know, this, I'm showing her pictures. And she's like, oh my gosh, you look just like young Bill. <laughs> her talking, and here's Bill Shatner, right? And he goes, let me see that. <laughs> and I give him my phone, and he goes, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I leaned over, and I put my arm around his shoulder, and I said, this is all for you. I said, you were so instrumental to me when I was young. And I made this series as a tribute, as a way to say thank you for what you gave me when I was little. And he put his arm around my shoulder and he was like, thank you. That's extraordinary.
Now, why do I tell you that story? Because about a year ago, the first person came up to my table at an autograph session and leaned over and said, I think you're going to know what I mean when I say this. You're my William Shatner. And I, I almost started sobbing. I mean, when I was a little boy, I went to Star Trek conventions. And I stood on this side of the table and walked along and nice to, nice to meet you, Mr. Takei, right? George Takei, who played Sulu and, and Dr. McCoy, Leonard, and Divorce Kelly, and, and Scotty, and I don't know, 12, 13, 14 year old little Scotty, Big Manana, going to Star Trek conventions and meeting these people. On this being on this side of the table. And it's been so what's the word? So powerful and humbling to find myself on this side of the table and people coming up now who say things like, you know, you're my childhood. Like I've been listening to you since I was I've been listening to you watching your show since I was twelve or something. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, just take me to heaven right now. Because it just doesn't get any better than that. There is no dollar value you can ever put on that. You know what I mean? That's beyond the amount of money. So thank you. I'm going to say thank you to you a hundred times this weekend. So don't get tired of it, okay? Because I will be thanking you all weekend. Yes, my dear. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I just I want you to hear that question. <laughs>